All right, it's time to check out the starting code for Grade Recorder. All right, so first thing uh, that you should do, uh, just to get it out of the way, is to go into Firebase. Uh, we're gonna be jumping back and forth to Firebase, as you can imagine, uh, a few times here. Uh, so go into your Firebase account and go ahead and make yourself a, a, um, a Grade Recorder app. And then for your URL, you can just use your username and then uh, slash Grade Recorder, all right? And click Create and you'll be in business, right? Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I expect that you've done that. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and download starting code. All right, <clears throat> so there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna have to do before you can uh, before you can actually run the code. The first thing, as you can imagine, is that you're gonna have to go and, and change the, the URL to go to, to your Firebase. So this is gonna be found in constants.java. And you can see we've got several constants for this right here. But the Firebase URL itself uh, is where it says your username. Go ahead and change that to your own. Um, I'm also noticing that, that you're gonna to have to get rid of this, this hyphen right here. So that right there is a, um, is a typo, right? So again, just make sure that you get it to match with, with your own. All right, next, uh, you're going to want to set up the authentication. And we have two forms of authentication for this, uh, as you might have seen from the login screen, uh, is that we have we have email password and then Rose Fire. Uh, so for those of you who are taking this as Rose students, um, you're going to be able to use which, whichever one you want. Uh, for, for everyone who isn't from Rose Hellman, uh, email and password is basically your only, uh, your only option here. Uh, but let's go ahead and get those set up. So the first thing is go to the Login and Auth tab within back in your Firebase. Uh, and go ahead and, and, and enable email and password. And then remember, if you scroll down on this page further down, there's a way to create users. So go ahead and make yourself a user. I forget what the password validation is here, but if you're safe, you'll probably put it with at least five characters, um, or you can change it inside the login fragment. Kind of up to you, right? But again, I'm using something simple. Uh, you know, For testing, I use something like a uh, at b.com with a password of five A's in a row. I mean, something really, really that's that's easy for you to type in uh, when it comes time to, to test it. All right, uh, for Rose Holman students, um, you're also gonna wanna go ahead and, and generate and copy the, the Rose Fire registry token, right? So um, go ahead and click that and follow the process there. So I clicked on it and you'll, you'll remember, um, basically you just need to validate that you're from Rose and then you're gonna need your Firebase secret uh, if you if you don't remember where where that came from, again, just just you know, here's basically a, a copy of an old slide from from the last time we did this with Password Keeper. Uh, but basically, what you're going to do is is go ahead and grab your secret um, from Firebase, and that's going to show one up here. And again, this is your secret specifically for the Grade Recorder app. Uh, you'll copy that, and there's even a copy button there um, that's not showing up right now. But but you can basically copy it from there um, into Rose Fire. Uh, and then click generate token. And then when you do, you have the whole token. And again, there's, there's a copy button there. Some people weren't grabbing the whole token. Uh, and if there's, you know, if, if you miss a character or whatever, it's gonna, um, of course, it's not gonna be valid, right? So, so make sure that you do that carefully. Um, grab your token there, and you're gonna wanna put it um, back in the Firebase. And actually, I, I changed a little bit where, where this is. Um, so forget this. Um, I would recommend go ahead and put it in the same place that we had the uh, that we had the other. So go ahead and um, put it in constants.java, right? So constants.java, and it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you know, if someone were going to decompile your program, they could get to it either way. Uh, and you know, since it's it's not really a resource in the same way. Uh, is something else that, that would need to uh, depend on a device or depend on locale or anything like that. Um, I'm just using to put it to put in with the other constants. Okay. All right, uh, it's time to do the validation rules uh, with Bolt. So rather than just read through this, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do it here. Uh, so I gave you all the rules that you need uh, in, in Bolt, at least for the, for the basic uh, starting code here. So you wanna navigate into wherever you stored Grade Recorder, right? So here's my Grade Recorder um, folder, and I go in it, 
and you see that that I that I already have a, a rules dot bolt there for you. Um, so what I want to do is without clicking on any file, if I'm on Windows, I'm going to shift and right click and that's going to give me an option. Uh, looks like you're not seeing it on the screen here. Um, shifting and, and oops, shift right click should give me an option to uh, open a command line window. Uh, open a command window here. All right, so I'll do that. And again, that's just so I don't have to worry about CDing all over the place uh, in Windows uh, in the, the little uh, shell here. And what I want to do is a couple things. So first of all, uh, I want to Firebase uh, install. If you haven't installed Bolt, all right, then the command is is whoops, command is right here. So it's uh, excuse me, it's it's npm install global Firebase Bolt. And I already did this, uh, but let's I'll, I'll do this again here. npm install global Firebase hyphen Bolt. Okay. And you give that a minute to give the installer a minute to run. All right, now I'm installing it on top, so so no big deal there. And then here's here's sort of the the, the main thing. Uh, you just want to run it, right? So very simple to use. So Firebase uh, Bolt is is our command, and we want to run it on our Bolt file, which as you saw when we navigated there is just rules.bolt. So and do this, and they are syntactically correct. Otherwise, it give me syntax errors. Uh, but it says here generating rules.json um, so I can I can go back and open those guys up all right so here's my rules.json uh, double click on those yeah do you want to load it and here we have all the all the stuff right in a in a beautiful um, JSON format all ready to go into Firebase so I'm going to grab this whole thing and you'll notice that uh, it has plenty of validation rules and pretty much only validation rules right within this whole thing so I'm going to grab it and then I'm going to go back into Firebase. And I'm going to go into Security and Rules. And I had already put them in here, uh, but I basically am going to um, I'm going to paste them in. Remember to save the rules. Okay. And now it should validate all the models that we have, right? So, so all the ones that are that are in there. Uh, comment about this right here. So, so. Um, honestly, you know, I wrote the rules and it wasn't that hard to do, you know, sort of digging around in the documentation a little bit. And you'll have some good examples to, to use when, when you're creating your own because I'm giving you these here. Um, I, I will say that I really stuck with the validation rules uh, to, to, you know, to validate the, the, the data schema. And I didn't dig too much into the read write rules. Essentially, uh, if you look at the rules, it says that you need to be authenticated. And I didn't worry about too much about different users, uh, you know, using each other's each other's stuff and just things would get complex with the different owners and all that and I'll, I'll mention right here that you know when you have you know the the different data referring to, uh, to each other via keys um, and and really the fact that if I add an item it it sort of cascades right if I'm gonna add an assignment it's gonna have to make a whole bunch of great entries right if I delete um, you know if I if I delete a, a, a great entry I guess that's not a huge deal um, but if I were going to go ahead and, and, you know, say delete, you know, a student, well, I need to delete all the great entries associated with it, right? Deleting a course, as you can imagine, deletes a ton of stuff, right? So when that happens, uh, you know, right now I have some of that logic in the code uh, in a utils file, uh, but you'll you'll find out that that I, not even everything is there. That's a part that I haven't finished yet. Um, and really, if if you wanted to do this industrial strength, what you'd actually have is a different admin server. That'd be running as a client uh, to handle this bookkeeping, right? So here's your, you know, here's your Firebase, right? And here are all your, um, here are basically all your different users uh, connected, uh, you know, your app users who are all connected. But over here we also have, you know, sort of this admin, right? That's that's basically maybe like a node server or something, and it would be detecting. Right, sort of, you know, connected to this, and every time someone, you know, maybe maybe created a new assignment or something, it'd be listening for this creation, and it would go ahead and it would have full read/write access to take, you know, that that assignment, and then to go ahead and, and create all the great entries for it, or you know, the same thing for deletion and so on. Um, and again, industrial strength, because my goodness, if this were cross-platform, all of this logic would have to be repeated on on all of the the different platforms. 
And I don't really want to have to do that. I'd rather just, just write it once and, and have it do there. And really, it's handling a lot of bookkeeping, really. Um, you know, any any ideas about that? Uh, you know, Tyler's actually put together a, a, a different, a whole different presentation about that. And there's a link right here. I encourage you to check it out, uh, see what you think, right? If that's really what you want to do, probably not going to do that in your project. Again, just sort of looking ahead and giving you some context for what you might do in, um, in industry. Okay. Uh, and as a result, for your ter term projects, um, I am going to expect that in your projects that you do likewise, that, that you're probably going to use Bolt. I mean, you can write it in raw JSON if you want, but I expect you to write all the validation rules uh, on there so that you you so you catch junk data that's that's thrown up. Okay, um, and we're not going to worry so much about the the read write rules. All right, so with rules in place uh, and your, your authentication, uh, we've got pretty much everything that, that we need um, in here. So uh, let's see, so login and off. Um, we don't have a, a, a web client for this or anything. You've taken care of um, you're using your secret for Rosefire and you've got some data. Well, actually you don't have any data yet, uh, but it's time to go make some. All right, so what, we're, what we'll have you do all right, is go ahead and run the starting code um, and you can uh, go ahead when you sign in, again, Rose students, you're probably going to want to sign in with, with Rose Fire. Um, pretty cool. Once you sign in, you're going to have no courses, right? So you'll have to go ahead and, and you know, make a course or two. Uh, and then, you know, I'd recommend for, for that course, go ahead and, you know, pick one and, and add, a, add an assignment or two. Um, actually, I'd, I don't think I would add the assignments yet because basically what, you know, what would happen well, you can do that, right? The normal workflow would be to, to, to actually, once you have a course, would be to make the students first, right? Because what we really want to have happen is when you do make an assignment, that it's going to go the extra step and also um, make the grade entries. Now it's not going to matter for running it right now, um, you know, there, because there's no. You, you see, it's kind of grayed out here, right? This is this is your job. This this code does not yet exist, right? In the in the project. Um, but what I want you to do is just mess around with some of the CRUD, uh, some of the CRUD interfaces for courses, uh, students' assignments. You can play around with owners if you want. Um, there may be maybe some bugs in the in the um, in the owners. Everything else I think is pretty decent. Um, the back button is kind of nav uh, navigation is a little bit brittle, uh, so don't worry too too much about that. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to to change any of the bugs that you bugs that you find. Uh, just go ahead and let me know uh, with whatever you see. All right, that's all we have for this uh, for this lesson. Uh, come back next time, and we're going to talk through some of the starting code. I'd encourage you, if you want, before you start the next video, um, go ahead and open up the code, kind of explore it, see what you got there, and then we'll we'll focus in on a couple of key parts. All right, see you soon.